हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑन क्लासिकल मैकेनिक्स इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी वर स्टडिंग द सिस्टम ऑफ पार्टिकल्स एंड वी हैड स्टडीड द लॉ ऑफ एंगुलर सॉरी लॉ ऑफ कंजर्वेशन ऑफ लीनर मोमेंटम फॉर द सिस्टम ऑफ पार्टिकल्स इन दिस वीडियो वी विल स्टडी द लॉ ऑफ कंजर्वेशन ऑफ एंगुलर मोमेंटम फॉर अ सिस्टम ऑफ पार्टिकल्स ओके सो यू कैन सी वी आर मूविंग ऑन सेम लाइन we earlier we had for a single particle we have law of conservation of linear momentum law of conservation of angular momentum and then law of conservation of energy similarly for a system of particle we will have law of conservation of linear momentum angular momentum and energy right so uh, we have we are already done with the law of conservation of linear momentum in this video we will study the law of conservation of angular momentum for a system of particles the system will be same we have we are having a system consisting of n particles suppose we have this n particles p1 p2 and so on pn right and there are external forces acting on the particle uh, on the system and then there are internal forces acting on the system right so we have to study the law of conservation of angular momentum so the things are same uh, i'll not repeat if we are considering the is particle then in the last video we have seen that the equation of motion of the is particle can be written as rate of change of is particle is equal to external force acting on the is particle that is fie and then external internal force is acting on the uh, is particle that that is summation over j fji where fji is the internal force exerted by jth particle on the is particle okay so this summation this particular summation is the total internal force acting on the is particle and this is total external force acting on the is particle so the, 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 the these two quantities they together make the total external uh, total force acting on the is particle so we have second law of motion which says that rate of change of uh, linear momentum is equal to total external force uh, total force acting on that is particle okay so okay with respect to this particular particle this is the total external force acting but these are the internal forces with respect to the system of particles right okay so we have this thing and we want to study the uh, law of conservation of angular momentum so we know that how to go from linear momentum to angular momentum we have to take the cross product with the position vector so what we will do we will take the cross product here with the position vector of the is particle that is ri so we will get ri cross dpi by dt is equal to ri cross fie vector plus ri cross summation j fji vector right so we have this thing okay so let us move ahead so i can just i'll just simplify this thing further so i have ri cross dpi by dt is equal to ri cross fie plus this is summation over j so i can take ri inside that is independent of j so this is ri cross fji right okay now look at this thing so we have this thing left hand side we have ri cross dpi by dt now you consider this thing d by by dt of ri cross p what is this pi we know how to differentiate the cross product that is we have product rule we will differentiate the first quantity and we'll keep the second as such then sum keep uh, keep the first as such and differentiate the second quantity now this first quantity what is this this is dr by dt that is vi that is the velocity of the is particle and what is this linear momentum of the is particle that is mi into vi vector plus we have ri vector cross dpi by dt now what is this these two vectors vi and mi vi they are in the same direction so if we know that parallel vectors okay they have uh, cross product zero because cross product magnitude of the cross product is magnitude of first into magnitude of second into sine of the angle between them and now sine between this uh, angle between this vector and this vector is zero therefore sine zero is zero so this quantity is zero so we have this is equal to ri cross dpi by dt right so it means that it means that this left hand side this becomes 
dy by dt of this is ri cross dp by dt i can write this thing as this so the left hand side becomes dy by dt of ri cross pi vector is equal to and this is right hand side is ri cross fi vector plus j summation over j ri cross fj i vector right okay so now you can uh, recall that in case of linear momentum this quantity was zero okay we have used the newton's third law of motion and this quantity was zero now uh, let us see what is this quantity here first this is uh, till now we have a single particle first take the sum over i i so that we consider the system of particles so we'll get dy by dt of summation ri cross pi okay i from 1 to n is equal to summation i from 1 to n ri cross fi e plus summation i summation over j ri cross fj i vector right now look at this quantity look at this quantity what is this quantity if we uh, this summation runs over i and j so here we have quantity ri cross fj i plus rj cross fij we have this quantity right okay uh, like two of the terms in this summation are like this and we can have uh, we can uh, write that those two terms like this now from newton's third law of motion what we have we have f i j is equal to minus f j i this is when the system the internal forces obey newton's third law in weak form it means that forces are equal and opposite okay forces uh, acting uh, the force which is particle exert on js particle is equal to minus of the force okay that is uh, direction is negative direction is opposite to the force which js particle exert on the is particle so from here this quantity will become if we use this thing then this quantity will become ri minus rj cross with fj i vector right now what is this now if for example this is my is particle and this is my js particle right so we have this thing something like this that this particle is exerting a force like this and we have this notation uh, this law we in the weak form says that the particle js particle will exert force in the opposite direction but if the force is also along this line joining i and j so if r i j this is the line along uh, joining is particle and js particle okay if this is the line joining is particle and js particle then in that case what is this this is actually rij we can see i'm sorry not R rij yeah this is rij vector cross with fji vector right now if this vector is parallel to vector is along rij it means that this force acts along the line joining ith and jth particle okay if in addition to the condition on the forces that the forces should be equal and opposite we have a condition that the force act along the line joining the ith and jth particle that is this vector is parallel to rij right okay this is called newton's second law uh, sorry third law of motion in strong form third law of motion in strong form it means that in strong form we want that forces should be equal and opposite and other than that the forces should act internal forces should act along the line joining the particles right so if we, if our internal forces are following the newton's third law of motion in strong form then this quantity is zero because in that uh, that case these two vectors are parallel and the angle between them is zero therefore sign of the angle is zero therefore this this these quantities are zero okay and in this particular sum 
in this sum all the quantities we have like pairs okay for every is particle we have a gs particle okay so this this whole term will vanish if we assume that internal forces are obeying newton's third law of motion in strong form right so we are left with so we are left with these two quantities if we assume that newton's third law of motion is followed in strong form then we have this thing quant this quantity left now what is this this is the total angular momentum of the system so we have dl by dt is equal to what is this this is the torque of the force on the ith particle so i can write it as ni e and i stands for the torque so i can write it as summation ni that is total torque acting on the system torque or moment acting on the system so what do we get we have this thing d l l stands for the angular momentum by dt is equal to total external torque or moment acting on the system okay so if total external moment acting on the system is zero then dl by dt is equal to zero implies l is constant so from here we get new uh, law of conservation of angular momentum of a system of particles what is this law it states that if total external torque acting on system is zero then total angular momentum of the system is conserved okay right so we have this as law of conservation of angular momentum right okay so you have to note one thing for law of conservation of linear momentum for a system of particle you need that the internal forces should obey newton's third law in weak form okay weak sense and for law of conservation of angular momentum for a system of particles you need newton's third law to be followed in the strong sense okay so we have forces which don't follow either the weak sense or the strong sense whenever we have a uh, an internal force which obey the newton's third law of motion in strong sense obviously it will obey in weak sense right but you have to take care of these things for example if you have uh, a system of particles which involves moving charges okay where we have byers servets servets law for uh, equation of motion right in that case those forces are not obeying newton's third law of motion right there we cannot apply these equations as such we don't have these law of conservation of linear momentum and angular momentum in the particular form which we are studying so you have to take care of these things that if you have law of conservation of linear momentum then it means that you are automatically assuming that the internal forces are obeying newton's third law of motion in the weak sense and if you have law of conservation of angular momentum then you you automatically assume that the internal forces are obeying the newton's third law of motion in the strong sense okay thank you